welcome to a new episode of the New Lead Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. I'm Carmen, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and I'll list the other things right here on the screen. So it is probably too hot <laughs> to be filming. <laughs> I it's it's just too hot. I mean. In the Netherlands, in the past couple years, the summers have been really hot and, um, you know, like above 30 degrees, sometimes like last year even 40 degrees, which was insane. But um, this might not seem so hot to those of you living in the US or in Australia, but um, <laughs> take into consideration that this country basically has no air conditioning. So um, yeah, we have ventilators and uh, blow up uh, pools. So yes. <laughs> so I sat in front of a ventilator just to be able to be kind of presentable right now because, uh, I don't know, I feel like I want to shower every five minutes. So. <laughs> How have you all been doing? Um, I have been up to a lot of crafty stuff. I have made all the things and um, it's funny because I was actually planning to take it easier and I have been taking it easier the last uh, two weeks because I'm just craving time off. Um, so, you know, because in these weird times, um, you know, we usually take time off to go somewhere, but when you can't go anywhere, we just don't really take time off. So, uh, yeah, that, that has kind of been nagging at me. Um, but the last couple weeks I have been taking it easier. I've been taking afternoons off or just, you know, slow mornings or just, a break whenever I need it. I've been playing more video games. I've become <laughs> obsessed with The Sims again. More on that later because uh, I want to get onto the crafty stuff. Um, so uh, in order for myself to take things easier, I've been allowing myself to do things that are not necessarily for a new design or anything. Um, and this is something that I've been struggling with a couple years, uh, for a couple years, because, you know, capitalism is so ingrained into us that we can't really have hobbies anymore. We feel like everything has to be monetized, monetized because everything can be monetized nowadays. And, um, it hasn't like killed my creativity yet, but it has killed my free time. Because uh, whenever I'm doing something, um, I feel like I could be using this for my business. And uh, so I don't want to say that I don't have hobbies anymore, but um, I had to get used to the fact, again, that some hobbies are allowed to just remain hobbies. So I have done uh, some spinning, I have done some embroidery, um, I was planning some sewing things, but um, yeah, and I've just, I've been knitting things that are not going to be designs, and that has been really nice. Um, and of course, while I was spinning, I was thinking about all of these spinning videos that I could be making, but I'm just, I don't think I really want to do that. Um, you know, one, because I want some things to just remain hobbies, and two, because I kind of really want to focus my business on knitting. So just not even crochet, just I really want to focus on knitting, although I will still be publishing crochet patterns. Um, but um, yeah, so just some random thoughts. But uh, one of the things that I have been making and that I have finished are some socks. And they are right here. 
and I had actually cast them on um, when I uh, was filming the last episode, but uh, I had just done the toe and I thought, nah, this is not going to work, because let me show you the yarn. So I was using my own hand spun yarn, and it's this beautiful yellow color. Um, I got this row ring from Alternate Universe, uh, which is a yarn shop from um, the UK. It is close to Bristol um, and it is owned by Kim, who you may know as Kim Smith Happy on Instagram. She also has an Instagram for the shop, which is a U shop, I think. Um, but if you if you search alternate universe, so alternate as in knitting, uh, then you will probably find it. But um, I got the roving from her. Um, she does some amazing recycled blends and um, you know she's always being very uh, conscious of the environment and um, yeah I really like that. So and they had some vegan uh, spinning blends as well and this blend had some nylon in it so I thought okay I'll um, maybe these will be my first socks. And they are. <laughs> they have become my first hand, um, hand spun, hand knit socks. Um, but when I was first, or when I finished this um, spinning project, I thought, you know, it's, I don't know if you can tell what I mean, but I thought, no, it's, it's, it's a bit too ropey for, um, for socks. And I thought it would was going to be too rough or too hard um, to be socks. And when I had just done the toe, I thought that, you know, my suspicions were confirmed um, because it was just very rigid and it did not seem like a nice fabric. But then I finished them and they are amazing and I want more. Um, and I remembered, uh, you know, the reason why I wanted to try uh, knitting with my own hand spun for socks is that Amy from the Stranded Dye Works podcast uh, was always saying that her hand spun socks are her favorite socks. And, um, and now I totally understand why. I mean, first off, it's it's amazing to knit with your own hand spun. It's it's just it adds such another level <laughs> to your knitting project. And it's just the fabric, I mean, it is kind of rough, but um I don't know, it's just, it feels really, really nice. So, um, so for my hand spun, I did a three ply because that's what Amy said. So, um, I spun three bobbins, uh, with, you know, the yarn that I could spin as thinly as I could. Um, and I think it ended up being like a sport weight or a DK weight. Um, and this is 100 grams of uh, roving, but I could only do ankle socks and um, the, or, you know, not really ankle socks, but also not regular length socks. Um, and then the ribbing, I did, I used some um, Escape Piece Metropolis for this, which is um, a fingering weight sock yarn, and I used it double stranded. And I knit this on 2.5 millimeter needle. I usually knit my socks on 2.25. Um, this 2.5 mm millimeter felt like it was a bit tight, like a bit small for the weight, uh, for the yarn weight that I was using. But um, the tight gauge was also just, I think that's what also made it very comfortable because um, yeah, 
where am I going with this? Uh, just tight gauge is just really good for socks. It improves um, the durability um, and just the feel of it is really, really nice. And um, I, I was wanting to, um, I wanted to have a tighter gauge for sock knitting uh, ever since on a in a sock knitting Facebook group, I think it's called Addicted to, Addicted to Sock Knitting. Um, this woman, um, I don't remember her name, but uh, she was saying that um, socks don't need nylon in it. Uh, you just need 100% wool and a very, very tight gauge. And I don't remember the gauge that she listed, but it was very tight. Um, and I have some 100% wool yarn in here from Ovis etc. Um, and it is a really, it's, well, not really thin, but it is, it is a thinner fingering weight sock yarn than my other fingering weight sock yarns. So, uh, so I'm going to try and knit with a two millimeter. So I think that is US zero, um, with a two millimeter needle. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that was also why I knit these on kind of like smaller needles than you would actually use for, for this yarn. But they turned out really, really nice. And even, like, I finished them last week and there were some super hot days and I still wore these and they were amazing. And I cannot wait to um, knit another pair of hand spun socks. And that is what brings me on to my second project because... Ta-da! I have three new bobbins with... Uh, hand spun singles on them. So I've just finished the third bobbin like half an hour ago. Um, I spun these over the past few days and first of all it was lovely to spin again. I haven't spun for months um, but when I was knitting up those socks I, <laughs> I just wanted to spin. So I took this um, braid, this roving braid out of my stash, which was by Undercover Otter. Um, I have some pictures or maybe even a video of this roving when it was still unspun, so I'll put that in here. And it's a lovely mix of uh, orange and pink and white and purple, and it's just really, really pretty. And I divided it into three equal parts, and then those parts I, I spread it out and I was able to divide each piece into seven, um, oh, like <laughs> narrower pieces, um, strips maybe, yeah, seven strips. And then those seven strips I would use for one bobbin. And this was the first bobbin, I'll put the other ones down. So this is the first one, and it, this is the lightest one in color. There's a lot of uh, salmon, um, orange, and pink. And this one is also the thickest because, you know, I was still getting used to spinning again. And um, on the second bobbin, I have spun much, much thinner which is, is not necessarily a good thing because it means that when I spin these together that this one will have a lot left over. Um, so I'm going to see how I um, handle that if I have enough of this left over to hold that double. Yeah, so I can make up for another one running out. So we'll see about that. But um, yeah, this one, <laughs> I mean, uh, the color gradient really shows up on this one. But uh, it's just so pretty. And I don't think I can show you how thin I spun it. Or maybe I can if I unwind it a little bit. But um, it's really thin. 
Can you, can you see this? I mean, I'm so proud of this. I'm really proud of that. So, um, I can't wait to ply these. Um, here on the, th on the first one. It's also thin, but, um, yeah, you can barely see the difference, but there are some thicker pieces in here. Um, and then the third one, which I just finished um, this afternoon, uh, I won't be unwinding it because I've just completed spinning it, so then I'll j it'll just pull right off. But this one uh, did not really have a lot of orange in it, but uh, that's okay because the other ones have a lot of orange. Um, and this will just be one of the three plies of the sock yarn, so... Um, yeah, I'm just really excited for this. So, uh, technically you need to wait a little bit from spinning to plying. Plying is when you have several strands and, you know, ply them together, uh, so you get, um, yarn. <laughs> I mean, this is already yarn, but, um, so technically you need to wait, like, ideally a day, um, between spinning and plying, but, um, you can also spin and then ply right away, and then let that sit on the bobbin for 24 hours before you take it off, uh, um, before you take the plied yarn off the bobbin. So I'm not sure if I can wait until tomorrow because this is just really exciting. Um, if I can, I'll be doing this tomorrow morning and then probably uh, taking a video so I can make an Instagram reel out of it. <laughs> because I've taken videos from every part of the process so far. So. I find those reels always very satisfying when you see a long process really sped up into 15 seconds. Um, or I'm gonna do it tonight. So, yeah. <laughs> and then, who knows, I'll have new songs by the end of next week. Yay! Which, by the way, next week, Saturday, is gonna be my 30th birthday. So I'm gonna be 30 the next time. I film a podcast so yeah I mean it feels weird to be turning 30 and on the other hand not weird at all because a lot of people I know are 30 and they're fine <laughs> but um yeah I just uh, I'm really looking forward to my birthday party because things are going to be a bit more um, um, you know, less strict here, you know, less rules for how many people you have over. And uh, I am planning to have a pool party with uh, bath bombs in the pool. And then we all put our feet in the pool and then we just have a really relaxed time. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, so yeah, that is my plan for my next pair of handspun socks. So again, the roving was uh, dyed by Aiden from Undercover Otter. They are an amazing dyer. Go check them out because they have amazing stuff. I don't know if they still have roving in the shop right now. Um, and this, this one didn't have a colorway. It was a one-of-a-kind thing. But um, yeah amazing yarn anyway, especially if you love neon and bright colors. So yeah, Aiden is your person for neon colored yarns. Anyway, so on to my next project, which is my vocal soka or my tornado toes socks. Um, I have finished the first sock and I mean, this just looks, <laughs> it doesn't look like a sock, does it? Um, but, um, and I'm debating whether the cast off is too tight. That's why I've left such a long, um, tail on this. I mean, these are going to be kid socks. So, um, these are the size for up to, I don't know, like 10 years old. I don't know kids, you know. So, um, <laughs> so I'm not sure whether the cast off is too tight. 
could be, could be not. I mean, I mean, you want things to be stretchy, right? With socks, putting on children. I mean, they're they're not probably not sitting still or whatever. <laughs> I know with baby stuff, you have to keep openings, just the neck and and arms and such. You have to keep them very very stretchy just to be able to dress the baby comfortably. But um, yeah. So these are my tornado toes. <laughs> my spiraling twisty socks and the idea <laughs> the idea is that there is this kind of spiral ribbon here the idea is that you don't need a heel in here and uh, I'm going to try it on an actual kid to see if that's correct um, so I finished the first one and I've cast on for the second one and actually the yarn kind of um, it ended so that I would have to um, how am I gonna say this so when I cast off for the first one if I were to continue directly I would have the very same cast on colors and for this one I did not want them to be matching so <laughs> I wound off uh, some of the color and then um, so I could start with yellow on this one because I like yellow and I did not want them to be matching so or you know the stripes to line up perfectly so yeah I really like this and I'm really just intrigued by this concept um, yeah, and I hope that it's going to work. The pattern is already off to uh, a team of testers, so I am very excited to hear um, what they think. They all have kits at home, so they will be able to uh, try it on them. And the pattern actually also includes, so I will have three sizes in the pattern. This is the smallest size and, you know, basically kids can wear this from two years old um, to <laughs> ten years old. I mean, this is also the stitch, uh, stitch circumference for teens. Uh, so I have three sizes, kids, teens, adults. Uh, so for kids and teens, the stitch circumference is the same, but the length, uh, the recommended length is different. So this is just a very stretchy pattern. So, I mean, I could wear this. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, the pattern also includes adults. So if you want to make a fun pair of socks like this for yourself, and you know, whether you put in a heel Anyway, I mean, the, um, the stitch pattern is still very fun. I think if I were to make these for me, that I would just put a heel in to be, to be sure. Because the benefit of these is mainly for kids, you know, they grow so fast so that <laughs> if you knit them a pair of socks and the heel is here, then, you know, that heel is going to be at a wrong place for them next year because their heel is actually here so um, and then these socks are just you know they don't have a fixed heel placement so they can just hopefully wear them for years so um, but because we as adults don't have growing feet anymore uh, we might as well just put in a heel so um yeah those are my thoughts on this so far um so yes that is <laughs> it's not much pro uh, progress because these are very small socks but um anyway i'm still going to mark it on my progress board and i'm going to show you my project bag as well because this is actually um <laughs> one of my hand sewn bags this is a bento bag or an origami bag i believe there's a pattern for it that is called bento bag and i also think there's a pattern for it called origami bag but uh it's basically a long rectangle and you need to have um so it has to be like 30 centimeters on 
the short side and 90 centimeters on the long side or um, any other dimensions where the short side is one third of the long side and then you can basically sew this back and I also hand dyed the fabric with cochineal so yay <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is just over 50% done. It was 25% done last time, so I'm going to mark my progress. Yay! For my twisty socks, 50%. So these are going to be called Tornado Toes, and uh, the Dutch pattern is going to be called Vocal Soka. <laughs> Usually I don't have um, a separate name for the Dutch pattern, but I just cannot resist the name Vocal Soka. I just love it. Then on to my next whip, which is in this basket. It's my strawberry sweater, and last time um, I was just um, just in a few rounds before sleeve separation. And I remember when my camera overheated that I was able to put it on a second needle and see um, and see where, you know, for how many rounds to continue. So I, th I think I was still using the white or was I already using this color? I don't know. Um, but I've split for the sleeves now. And I've completed that stripe of hedgehog fibers, and I am now onto a light green stripe with uh, Apple Martini by uh, Ushitita Yarns, which is a beautiful uh, high twist merino yarn, uh, light um, green with dark green speckles and pink and and mustard mustardy brown speckles, so really beautiful color. And I'm happy that I'm finally using this because th this has been in deep stash. Um, yeah, that was one of my very first podcast episodes, I think, when I got that yarn. Um, <laughs> I just, it's so hot right now and I can't believe I'm holding a turtleneck sweater. Um, yeah, but... I'm still on the fence whether it will be cute or not. I just, I just hope it will. Um, I think it will be very tight, but uh, maybe that will <laughs> blog out. And, or maybe, I, I could have a tight sweater. I mean, that's fine. Yeah, it's funny how these stripes look very similar, far away, but then. This is a very, um, yeah, very muted, just soft pinks and browns and white. And then this one has all kinds of colors in it. So yeah, I am going to finish the light green stripe and then I'm going to use this, which is a full and vine yarn. It's called Indoorsy which is a perfect yarn for me because I'm an indoorsy person. Um, yeah, beautiful. So I'm not sure whether I will be knitting a lot on this, um, but it will be going more smoothly now because I don't have to put it down every couple of rounds and see if I need to, you know, do an increase or split the sleeves. It's just plain sailing from here. So that is just really nice. Um, yeah, but I didn't do much on this, so um, <laughs> I'm just going to mark it as a little bit of progress. That's this one, my strawberry latte sweater, and I, I think it will be a pattern, but um, I'm not 100% sure because right now I don't have any energy to be thinking about <laughs> um, other, de other designs than 
the bazillion ones I'm already working on. So, so you'll see it when you see it. <laughs> and now I'm really, really excited for this one because this is one of the things that I allowed myself to get distracted by. So this is not a powder, not a design. It's just something for fun. And it is a huge pile of swatches that I am making into a bunting. So um, as I said, it's my 30th birthday next week and I'm planning to have a party in the in our backyard and I'm just really excited. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm planning some decorations. Um, which one do I want to show you first? I, I always save my swatches because I always think I can use them for something, you know, maybe a collage sweater, like, you know, Harry Styles cardigan, or maybe, um, a big blanket. But now I have assembled some swatches to make them into bunting. So these were actually these were not swatches these were for coasters um back like i don't know like 10 years ago i had this little shop um on a platform that doesn't even exist anymore on Dalamna, and um i had some crochet keychains in there but also crochet coasters and you know no one bought them so um they were still in my stash so i decided to make them into a bunting flag so i used some escapees metropolis to uh, crochet some granny stitches in between and now I'm also going to add um, yeah some some more edging on here I also have these um, these were I I actually do have the pattern for this on my website it's called the fillet flower square and that's the pattern for one of these squares um, I made these ones together so I crocheted this part and then I continued with this with the pink one and it's just when you change the color it kind of interlocks so these are just attached to each other and then these ones were separate so I um so I stitched those um to the existing bigger piece so yeah I I love the kind of Mediterranean or Mexican vibe of this uh, really bright colors it's not really my comfort zone but uh, for a summer party this is spot on so I'm also going to crochet some edging around that mainly to um, make them all a bit more cohesive and then this one, this is one of my favorites, and you might have seen this on Instagram already. So this is a knit swatch for my Cozy Moment shawl. This is for the third lace pattern. And um, yeah, uh, this is with Escape to Stonewashed, and I still had some leftover yarns in different colors, so I added some crochet trebles or double crochets on the top and bottom and yeah just looks really nice um this one was also a swatch for the cozy moments this is for the two last patterns i think and the crochet edging so yeah <laughs> but they are all just vastly different in terms of color so i'm trying to see if i can bring them together uh, this was a swatch that I wanted to convert into a shawl design, but it just didn't happen. So yeah, this is some Scapies and Victor Extra, which is a woolly, uh, variegated yarn, and Scapies Secret Garden? Yeah. And that shawl design has just never happened, but I really like this swatch, and I think it looks quite summery. 
And then this one, this is a swatch for a lace knitting workshop that I did at a Knit and Knot Knit and Knot Festival um, that I did last year on July 1st. So that's almost a year ago. So I gave a lace knitting workshop and this was just a swatch that I prepared for that. I think it looks really cute. So that will be part of my bunting. This is some old stash. So this <laughs> was a swatch for this blanket, which is a blanket that I designed in collaboration with another designer uh, for a website, <laughs> for a Dutch website on knitting and crochet. Um, that website was horrible. They treated us like, ugh, I don't know, they just exploited us to the bone. But um, my I loved collaborating with that other designer. She was she is really really talented and um yeah i loved it um but this was one of the swatches um when we were still very much in the beginning uh design process because it looks nothing like the actual blanket so yeah <laughs> um yeah but these are just you know cotton squares really good basis for bunting flags so yeah, that's going to be a part of it. I've already added this very last dark green um, border, which you can't really tell because it looks like it was just part of it. Um, and then here are some of the flags that I think are now finished. I'm not sure if I want to be adding any more onto them. So uh, this was also a swatch for that blanket. Um, I've added three rounds so two with uh, blue there's one that is like a granny granny stripe and then another one that you can barely see but is just uh, chain stitches and then one green one with um, with cluster stitches and I think it looks really just colorful and happy, uh, which is what I want for a party bunting. And this is another one. The swatch is also a swatch <laughs> for that blanket. Um, and I added the gray and yellow, the same border. And then this one and this was a bit further into the design process so you can th this is actually oops this is actually a square that we used um here it is i don't know if you can tell <laughs> yeah so this one was a bit smaller so i added the white border first and then i did the regular border so yeah i'm having lots of fun with this project and i just i got out this huge box of scapies katona and this is just a small selection of it so they have they have a box which is called the color pack and you get these tiny balls in there so these are 10 gram balls um, um so 10 grams, that's 25 meters, it's 100% cotton, and they have 109 colors in there, so a lot of color. And it's the same color pack that was used for um, the Rainbow Sea Waves blanket, which here it just looks <laughs> like a stripy piece of fabric, but um, the Rainbow Sea Waves blanket, I'll pop a picture up here um, that is made with the same color pack. So I still have one in the attic where I just used bits and bobs from. Okay, so my camera is overheated twice now. <laughs> I mean, same, same girl, same. But um, so 
So I was telling you about the yarn, about the color pack, so I still had a box of that in the attic that I already used bits and bobs from, so I couldn't use uh, the box as a whole anymore for a design. So um, yeah, I'm just using it for these edgings on um, on this bunting, so, and I think it's turning out really, really nice, so I'm, yeah, this is my happy project right now. It's, um, it's easy, it's portable, it's, you know, tiny things at a time, and, uh, hopefully I'll have a really colorful bunting at the end, and I'm planning to, uh, to sew them together, so, um, I have some really fun fabrics, I have some ribbon too, so maybe... I'll have a length of ribbon and like fold it over the top of the bunting flax and sew it in place, maybe. I think that would be more fun than uh, crocheting them together, so, and less work. So yeah, we'll see how it looks. I'll be sure to uh, take some footage of the bunting hanging at the party <laughs> um, for next, um, for the episode in two weeks time. Again, it's getting way too hot in here, so I'm going to wrap it up a little bit. I have some, just a few more things to show you, and then I want to talk a little bit about my plants. Uh, but here is another thing. So this is not knitting, this is not crochet, it's not punch needle, it's not hand spinning, it's not embroidery, it's felting! <laughs> so I was, um, I have felted this spot in a knit blanket. Um, it had a hole in it and I thought that is a perfect thing to mend for my darn it masterclass. So if you don't know I have masterclasses up on my Patreon page. There are several masterclasses on there already. Color Work Confidence, uh, we have a crochet and groomy project make-along, we have a sweater make-along, um, and lots more that I'm now forgetting, but now we also have a darn it masterclass. So a masterclass on mending, uh, and it focuses on knitting or knit fabrics, um, but I also have one or two episodes on um, crochet. One is crochet mending on a knit fabric and one is actual crochet mending on crochet. And this is the sixth and last chapter um, which is all about felting. So I took some of my wool felting supplies and I felted this hole in a blanket and it is probably the most secure mend that I have ever done uh, because there is no way that that hole will be unraveling because it is completely felted into shape and uh, I can't wait to actually try this technique on soles of socks uh, because yeah that will be super comfy. We don't have I mean, we have wool slippers for a reason. I mean, felted slippers, so. So yeah, I wanted to show you that. This was the last chapter of the Darn It Masterclass and that was um, uploaded just last Tuesday. And I already have lots of ideas for the next Masterclass. So be sure to subscribe as a Patreon to my Patreon page because you'll be supporting me as an independent designer and you can choose which amount you want to um, subscribe for each month. There are different benefits to each amount. Um, and you'll get loads of amazing exclusive content, so be sure to take a look if you haven't already. Um, I mean, especially right now in summer when it's kind of the low season of crochet and knitting, my patrons are really what keeps my company going. I mean, it's, it's some kind of stable income for me, so Thank you all so so much because I could not do this without you, without your support. Um, so yes, that was a bit of mending that I did for the master class. And this can now go back on our couch. This usually hangs on the spot um, where Momo likes to sharpen her nails and when this blanket is covering the couch in that area she no longer 
has that urge and she goes to her scratching mat so yeah and then the last project is embroidery so yes I really have done all of the crafts ex except sewing and needle punching um, this was a project which I started a while ago it's it's a beautiful project um, this is the this is what it's gonna be it's just a beautiful like flower and plants and kind of imaginary little fairy beasties pattern. Um, it's from Saju, which is a French company, Saju. Uh, you can find them as Maison Saju. And I haven't done that much, but I've started again, which is something. Uh, I've only added the red stitches here, but since, you know, this, this is a different kind of cross stitch than I'm used to because this fabric is very, very, um, thin. So the, <laughs> and it is linen, so the, like the boxes are not very how do you say this? Uh, are, they were not very even, like sometimes there will be a thicker thread um, going through the linen and it is kind of, yeah, it's just a different kind of cross stitch that I'm used to because um, you don't really see the lines or, you know, you don't really see the boxes. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but uh, I really, I just had to Google um, you know how big each stitch needed to be so yeah but I think it looks really pretty so far and you know coming back to a cross stitch project after a while you really have to yeah you really have to see like okay where am I and what is the next color you know what's what's the smartest next color for me to do like for me to pick up a cross stitch project again it's not as easy it's like I'm doing some amazingly intricate knit or crochet pattern and I really have to like you can't just pick it up again uh, you really have to find your place and like oh what what was that stitch again it, it kind of feels like that so I'm happy that I picked it up again I just did a little bit but um, yeah, this is just a nice project, especially for hot days, because um, it's all cotton, it's not uh, wool, so it doesn't really cling to your fingers or anything, and uh, it's not heavy on your lap. So yeah, this is perfect for hot summer days. And I'm keeping it in my beautiful bag, which was hand dyed by Hey Mama Wolf, and it's a Minook bag. And I got this at Edinburgh Yarn Fest. I love it. Yes, so now on to plant content, which I think weaves in really nicely with my brand name, New Leaf Designs, because I'm gonna uh, talk to you about the new leaves on my plants. <laughs> yeah, but um, news on the Monstera. She's doing very well. I've uh, shot a, a video of her new leaf, which is an, which has now completely unfurled. So I'm really happy. So yes, the key was more water, um, and especially that was, uh, and apparently that was the key with a lot of my plants because also this hanging plant here, my uh, potos. I don't know how to pronounce that in English, potos. So I thought I was doing a good job of watering it, but then. I overwatered it by accident and now it looks tons better. So um, yeah, I need to water it more. <laughs> um, and also, uh, this is going to be uh, interesting for those who have had to deal with bug infestations because we have a bug infestation. It's, uh, they are gnats. So that is G gnats. <laughs> I find it weird that there is a G in that word while well, you pronounce it the same whether the G is there or not. Um, 
which is varenraumig in, uh, in Dutch, uh, which are pesky little beasts that uh, lay eggs in the soil and only come out if the soil has been wet uh, long enough. So in the summer days, I'm just taking extra care to water my plants efficiently and I didn't let it dry out in between waterings uh, which has caused the little bugs to come out and I'm just you know after last year <laughs> last year's bug infestation where I had to basically throw away all of my plants including my beautiful monstera from last year I kind of have a, a phobia of bug pests now. Uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I don't want them anymore. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go completely aggressive on this. And I didn't buy any toxins or anything. Um, but I bought nematodes, <clears throat> alchis in Dutch. So I, I basically bought other bugs that will eat these bugs. Um, they are like tiny, tiny eels, um, and they can move through water and they are really, really tiny. Uh, I bought a little bag and it had like 10 million, 10 million bugs in there. Um, and I gave half of them to the plants and half of it is still in my fridge. So I can do that again next week. So you basically dissolve the... It, it's, it looks like powder, the little uh, bugs, because they are so tiny. So you dissolve them into uh, like half a liter of water. You make sure that the soil of all of the plants is very wet, um, because if the soil is dry, then the, then the nematodes can survive. So, um, and also, if the soil is wet, it activates the eggs of the you know bugs you don't want uh, and basically all of the soil that we can get nowadays have these eggs so it's there's a large chance that you will have this problem too if you water your plants a lot i made sure all of the plants in my entire house had a little bit of these bugs um, and while I had all of my plants there, um, Tim actually noticed that two of the plants also had trips, which is another kind of bug. And that is the most pesky bug that there is, in my opinion, because these can just kill your plants in no time. They are a little, like, one millimeter long, uh, yellow worms, like larvae and um, they eat the leaves so you see like the, the leaves will kind of have brown edges and it will seem like the plant is in too much direct sunlight because that's also when they get these kind of burnt edges um, and for my plant it just seemed like she did not get enough water uh, it was a calathea and she wasn't closing her leaves anymore um, which is what they do at night when it gets dark and then they open them again in the daytime. She wasn't doing that anymore and then I looked that up and it said, well, she probably has um, too little water. And I had just put her in a larger pot, which probably meant that, you know, I was thinking, okay, well, that makes sense because her roots are not in completely grown yet into the bottom of that pot. So probably the water is all in the bottom and she, and she can't reach it. So I need to make sure that I'm watering it um, every day. And that's what the bugs like too. So yeah, and my plant just kept getting sicker and sicker. And I thought, what the hell is going on? Uh, and then until my boyfriend noticed that, hey, these have little tiny worms on them. I was like, Fuck. um, because I do not want them on any of my other plants. Um, but these nematodes also eat those bugs. So fingers crossed that it will help. <sighs> and with trips, you, you see them on the leaves and just whenever you see them, just, you know, wipe them off, just kill them by crushing them into the leaf and um, hope that the nematodes do the trick. Um, it's really, really pesky to get rid of these bugs because, you know, once they reach the 
fly stage, they can fly to another plant, lay more eggs, and the cycle begins again. So yeah, they are really, really, really pesky bugs, and I hope uh, I hope I'm winning this battle. So yeah, there's my plant update. <laughs> Not as happy as last time, but you know, um, for what it's worth, I am happy that I now know what to do against them. So fingers crossed, I'll have better news in two weeks' time. Um, if you just have the gnats on your plants, you can also just completely let the plant let the plant dry out, and that will kind of take care of the problem. Whereas the trips will probably just survive. Um, yeah, if you have trips, you really need to have the nematodes because I tried everything last year. I tried garlic water. I tried just removing soil putting the plants in just water and then new soil but then there were eggs in there as well and sometimes they lay eggs into the stems so there really was uh yeah <sighs> it was just so frustrating so yeah that is my update for now I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, do let me know what you are working on and do let me know about your plants too. I don't have any Netflix updates because I'm still watching the bull, the bull type and uh, honestly I'm just playing The Sims a lot. They have a new expansion pack coming out next month which is called Cottage Living and you can have a llama and you can shear the llama and you can use that wool for knitting if you have the nifty knitting stuff back which I'm also getting for my birthday um, yeah so I'm expecting to do a lot more sims uh, simming yeah <laughs> the gamer in me is coming out again okay that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please do check out my other videos. Please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in another two weeks. Bye-bye.